Good morning, guys. Teacher Sam here with Maverick Lingo. Let's try this one more time. First of all, I am very sorry that we are starting this live video here a little bit later than planned. Okay, but you know what they say in English? Better late than ever, you guys. Better late than never. So, uh, give me one minute to introduce today's guest. Her name is Yset Mendoza. Well, I like to call her Yset Lorena Mendoza, okay? I think that she is a very, very interesting guest. And so I decided to invite her today so that she can have a conversation with us here live through Maverick Lingo. Yset Mendoza is a very young lady who came to Los Angeles a couple of years ago from Venezuela. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have a nice conversation here. We're going to talk a little bit about her very interesting journey. Okay, so let's get started, you guys. And please feel free to join us here, ask questions, listen to the story, and so on and so forth. Here we go. Let me invite you set here. I think now, and I believe that she should join us any moment now let's see here yay (laughs) (laughs) oh my god what's up what's up (laughs) hi how how you doing hello everybody good morning (laughs) so so i was joking a little bit with our viewers i said what should I call you? Should I call you Yset or should I call you Lorena? You know me. I try to go between both names. <laughs> How are you? you? Can... Good, thank you. You can keep calling me Lor- Lorena. <laughs> yeah, I, ap- yeah, I apologize. I believe that's your uh, middle name, right? And yeah. so I, I always go with the middle name here for some reason. So it's really, really nice to see you. Uh, you look a little different since the last time I've seen you. Uh, what I, <laughs> I wonder what it is. I wonder you know, what it is. <laughs> you know what? For all of our viewers, I just want to show you that this is this is what I remember Lorena to oh, look like who last is that? time. Okay, so <laughs> this is you said right here. And uh, if you ask me, very, very, very beautiful, very pretty still. So... Tell me a little bit about yourself. When did you, where are you from? When did you come to the United States? Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy that you guys are joining us. Um, I'm from Venezuela, a little country in South America. And uh, I came here in 2014, uh, October. So I've been happily living here in LA since then. Um, I came to study English, and that's how I met Sam. <laughs> awesome. She was now, my teacher. Now, so you have lived here for five years, more or less, right? I'm going to be five. I'm going to turn five in October. Okay, so we're getting there almost, yeah, five years. Now, when you first moved to the United States, how was your English? If you could rate your English between one and ten, how was it? (laughs) It probably was six and a half. Okay, that's not bad. So does that mean that you studied English in Venezuela before you came to the U.S.? Yes. um, In the school there, we get uh, English classes. And Mm -hmm. it was, I always was, all my life, I was interested in learning English. I remember Mm -hmm. learning the songs in English and translating the lyrics. Uh, That helped me a lot. Uh Um, uh Uh-huh. Also, in, 2000 and, in 2004, I lived for one year in Washington, D.C., so ah. I got English classes there. The difference of that moment with this time is that I would have English classes one, two hours, but then I will come back home and everyone will speak 
Spanish. Mm. <laughs> so that doesn't help. I see, I see. So now that you mentioned Spanish, we should remind our viewers that for those of you who are not familiar with Venezuela, uh, uh -huh. obviously the first language in Venezuela is Spanish, uh, yeah. right? So that's your native language, that's your first language, which is really yeah. interesting because if you live in a state like California, <laughs> you almost feel like Spanish is a second language. Do you agree yeah. with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So true. many people speak Spanish here yes. in uh, California. You, almost, you really almost feel like if Spanish is your, your first language, you almost feel like <laughs> you're home. You know, you're in another place, but you are at home through the language, right? Now... Yes. How was it coming to the United States when you first came here? Uh, did you experience like a cultural shock? I mean, were things the same as in Venezuela, different as in Venezuela? Tell us a little bit about that. All right. I've been always very interested and curious about uh, the culture from here, from the United States. And um, I've been learning so much about it since back home. So I was very excited, and mm. I will see things uh, that mm. it, it will be like, wow, well, it, it's like TV, or it's not like TV. Mm. Um, so the culture, it wasn't a big shock. I, I've been feeling very well. I've been feeling mm. very well uh, received. Mm. Mm, I will say the hard Part of it is the food. The food is very different to my country. <laughs> so I miss, I miss our, our, our gastronomy a lot. <laughs> Ooh, I see, I see. See, that's, an, that's a really interesting point because um, uh, it's, I guess it's, it's fascinating that we as people actually feel a connection to a certain type of food, right? You yes. try a certain type of food and you feel at home, right? You feel, yes. you feel like it kind of takes, uh, yes. takes you home. Have you been able to find a good, <laughs> authentic Venezuelan res restaurant here in LA? Yes, there are a couple that are really good. And unfortunately, they are a little bit far from my place. But um, there are, luckily for me, Brazilian food is very similar, like yeah, very, very that's similar. True. That's true. Um, I don't that's know true. if you guys know, Brazil is right next to Venezuela, south mm -hmm. of Venezuela, mm -hmm. and next to Colombia, too. Mm -hmm. So um, there are many delicious uh, restaurants close mm -hmm. home. Like, mm -hmm. I have already a couple of favorite ones. <laughs> Excellent. I'm actually, um, I'm picking up uh, a map here. I just kind of want to share with people who are following us right now, who are watching. So Venezuela, oh, right here. Venezuela. And as you can see, Brazil is a neighboring country. Brazil is we a are neighboring country, right? So uh, there are two expressions, if you don't mind, Lorena, that I would just like to explain real quick here to our viewers. I, uh -huh. earlier, I used, earlier I used the adjective authentic, to be authentic. authentic, right? So in this case, I asked Lorena, have you found any authentic Venezuelan food, right? So when yeah. we use that adjective to talk about food, we mean to say, hmm, have you found any authentic, real Venezuelan food? here in Los Angeles, right? So we use the, that adjective authentic in English, right? Uh -huh. But we also use the neighboring. Now, most of you guys, when you hear the word neighbor, you know exactly what we're talking about, right? Oh, that's my neighbor. But if you're talking about a country that is your neighbor, you say, oh, you know, this is our neighboring country, neighboring. right? I also yeah. noticed that a few of our viewers asked me, where are you from? I am from Montenegro, ex-Yugoslavia. 
I am Albanian by nationality. I grew up in Sweden, but I have lived in Los Angeles for the past 15 years or so. And I am the founder of Maverick Lingo. That's why you guys are following Maverick Lingo here. And I try my best as the founder of Maverick Lingo to give you guys an opportunity as often as possible to learn something new, to hear something new, and to give you an opportunity to improve your English. And that's really why we're having this conversation with you set this morning, right? Now, I wanted to give our, our listeners and our viewers a little bit of your background story. You're from Venezuela. You came here five years ago. But, you know, since the last time I've seen you, your look has changed a lot. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? What what prompted you? What inspired you to shave your head? Yes. Well, I sh I sh I'm sorry for the sound in the background. The the person is cleaning the leaves. I don't know if you can hear it. Well, yeah, I shaved that's okay. my I shaved my head um, the last May 31st. Mm -hmm. um, I spent well, I took that decision two almost two years ago, mm -hmm. but I wasn't ready for some reason i wasn't ready to do it mm -hmm. um i a month um a month ago i started a campaign with saint baldrick's uh they are in charge to to work in the research of, mm -hmm. of cancer the mm -hmm. cure of cancer on, on kids mm -hmm. and um everything started because i was suffering of alopecia areata Alopecia Ooh. is when you start finding ball spots in your head. So uh, one, one day I went to the salon and I found, and the lady told me, hey, do you have three circles in your head, uh, ball Ooh. spots? And I was like, oh, okay. So when I came back home, uh, I look at myself and I was very scared. I thought I was going to lose like all the back part of my head, of my hair. And um, I start researching about hair loss and alopecia. And then that's how I got in connection with this organization um, mm. that works with people, especially kids that suffer of cancer. Mm. And I... And I cure myself. I my hair started growing back, Ooh. but I that stayed in my head. Like I mm. I thought, wow, I can't imagine how them must be feeling losing all their hair. Um, I want to do something to help. I want to do something to show sympathy with mm. them, mm -hmm. and I decide to do it. Um, Last month, I put myself a goal of $500, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy that we reached the goal, mm -hmm. and, and, and just that's the reason why I have a shaved head now. <laughs> that's, uh, honestly, that's, that's really, to me, that's really, really fantastic, and it's really courageous, right? Courageous, <laughs> very, very Courage. brave. Honestly, very, very brave. I think it's such a huge step to take, uh, to just kind of shave your head to, I think, especially as a woman, you know, and of course, I don't want to be sexist or anything like that. But I think as women, it's we like care that. a lot more about our hair and we take such yeah. care of our hair and all of that, right? So I think it's such a huge step to do that in order to spread awareness and maybe those of you who are watching this right now you have heard that expression before you know to spread awareness awareness and you wonder mm, what does that mean to spread awareness well whenever we're trying to spread awareness we're trying to make people around us aware of something so we're mm -hmm. trying to make people around us pay attention to something yes. that maybe normally they really don't think about. Does that make sense, uh, right? So um, I think, I can't think of any other, a more shocking way, actually, if I can use that word, 
to kind of wake people up and, and really, really follow your story and really be interested in knowing more about your project. In fact, uh, on May 31st, when you were shaving your head live on Instagram, yeah. I was invited to, uh, to a restaurant for dinner with a group of people. And um, I'll be honest with you, I was following your live video in the middle of dinner. I said, I'm sorry, guys, I don't want to be rude, but this oh, is really important. I, I need to, no, seriously, I need to watch, watch this live. And so we kind of ended up following you, all of us at the table, and I was telling them a wow, little bit about really? your story. And, oh. Yeah, really. Yeah, really. And what That's made awesome. me... Um, what made me, what really touched my heart and what made me a little bit emotional was that moment when you, when you got teary eyed and you kind of started to cry a little bit. Uh, tell yeah. us, some, I mean, this was a process for you. I mean, it took over two years to yeah. kind of decide to do this. So tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit about the, that process, that feeling when you finally shaved, yeah. started shaving your, your hair. How did that feel? Well, two years ago, I, when I decided that I was, I, I have to do this. I, I want to do this. I just started growing my hair. That That is why it was so long. It was 23 Ooh. inches long. So Ooh. I didn't want to cut it. Like I, I, I couldn't even dye it because you cannot donate hair if it's damaged, if, it, if you have decolorate your hair. It's better if it's natural. Ooh. So I that was a commitment. <laughs> and um, I never thought I would feel nervous about it because I was so secure of doing this and mm -hmm. the most important thing and mm -hmm. I think for me and many other people is to have mm -hmm. support and mm -hmm. to have my husband's support it just mm -hmm. make everything easier like mm -hmm. without him well you saw him in the life he was next to me right. he called me doing right. that mm -hmm. and he you know, if I if I had a husband that would say, no, don't do that, you're going to look bad, mm. it wouldn't be easy at all. Mm. So um, everyone, all the people that start following my story uh, since two, a month ago, they were asking me so many questions. Mm -hmm. They were asking, are you nervous? Are you scared? Mm -hmm. How are you going to do it? I, mm -hmm. I actually discovered a new word of hair mm -hmm. and shaved heads that mm -hmm. I didn't know. And um, I was like, no, I'm not nervous. I'm not scared. It's just hair. It won't grow up. But in that moment, <laughs> when I turned on the machine, I was like, oh, my God, this is really happening. <laughs> I was just going to say, it must have, that's when it must have really kind of yes. hit you, like, oh, my God, this is happening, this is real, yeah. and I'm doing it, right? So, yes. I, honestly, I completely understood. I completely <laughs> understood that moment of, that emotional moment. It was almost yes. like a separation from something that's been a part yeah. of you for a while. Am I right? Am I? Am I yeah, right? of course. Mm -hmm. I want to let you guys know that, that was a live video here on Instagram, but the the video I posted on my YouTube channel as well, if everyone wants mm -hmm. to see it. Um, mm -hmm. I what well, this is what I think. I cry not because mm -hmm. oh I'm sad and not gonna have hair. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. uh, I cry because it was just too exciting to mm -hmm. after so so long being mm -hmm. able to do this and especially. Mm -hmm. Uh, knowing that we reached the goal at the beginning, I wasn't getting mm. any donations and I was a little scared. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do this in vain. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be so sad to me mm -hmm. <laughs> to get rid of my hair and just not being able to reach my goal. Mm -hmm. um, and like you say, I feel for a moment, somebody asked me, how do you feel of getting rid of your long, beautiful hair. Mm -hmm. And this is how I felt. Um, mm -hmm. I, as a human being, as a healthy human being, I'm so grateful for that. And mm -hmm. I love all my body because it's mm -hmm. healthy. It's a healthy body that mm -hmm. gives me the strength and the capacity of doing mm -hmm. anything I want. And my hair is part of it. And it mm -hmm. is, 
I was I was seeing my hair as part of my body that it was with me uh dealing with all my crazy hairstyles and all the everything I will do to it and he will still be there being healthy a healthy mm-hmm. part of my body so just mm-hmm. taking out of me I for a second I felt like I was being ungrateful with it mm-hmm. but then I have mm-hmm. to remember the reason why I was doing that Mm-hmm. Every time I felt a little bit doubt uh like I had a doubt about it mm-hmm. I I just had to remember myself why I was doing this and mm-hmm. it just made everything easier. Yeah. And um while you guys are watching you might notice that <clears throat> from time to time I'm kind of looking away from the guest and I'm looking kind of this way right it's honestly because I was trying to pull up the sets uh in a uh, YouTube channel so that wow. like she said in case you guys want to kind of really follow the process here right uh, i strongly recommend subscribe to yset mendoza on in on YouTube and so there are some interesting videos here that you can follow and you know again if you were not part of this moment when she actually decided to shave her head you know here is uh, here are three different videos that you can watch and you know a bunch of other videos that you can watch of course but these three last ones here really uh de- in a detailed way describe kind of this this journey here right this journey of transformation i would say right and uh <clears throat> there were a couple of things that i think you mentioned that i think are really interesting uh having the support of yeah. someone you really care for in this case your husband or people you're surrounded surrounded by even though in your case it was something that you just kind of decided to do uh to raise awareness but then it's almost like let's put ourselves in the situation of someone who has to do it not because they want to do it but because yeah. their their huh. disease or their challenge at the moment uh is requiring them them to exactly. do that. And that's <clears throat> that's another reason that for me personally I thought this was a really really um really moving experience honestly, you know. And again, not for the shock value of like, yeah, let's see what he said's going to look like with shaved with her head shaved, <laughs> but uh, just kind of like again, separating yourself from such a private part such a yeah. personal part as a woman's yeah. hair does that make sense yeah. yes so uh i i was like really and and again for those of you guys who may not have seen you said before i'm just kind of pulling up a, a picture mm-hmm. here right this is more or less what she looked like uh before with her long hair very natural hair uh, very very pretty as you can see and you said mm-hmm. uh, one thing that i thought of <clears throat> that i thought of the moment i saw you reaching you know the bald head right i said man she has the perfect look she has the perfect hair uh for someone to to be bald honestly i really thought, <laughs> so I thought no really i i think you totally pulled it off in english we say you totally pulled it off i think it looks it looks really nice really great but <laughs> How was it for you to actually step outside of your house for the first time? Did you you know, with with bald hair, did you feel any differently? Did you notice anything different? How was that experience? So, um, I've been out only once. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> because, wow. Uh, because I work from home, so okay. I don't have the need of going to an office and and go out um and i was so self conscious about it mm-hmm. but it was so cold like oh my god hair keep you so your head so warm that you don't imagine mm-hmm. <laughs> so i was wearing a beanie mm-hmm. um i uh i said that if we reach 500 dollars i mm-hmm. when i start noticing that the donations was kind of stuck, stuck i put some goals so to mm. motivate people to donate even more okay. mm. so um the goal of reaching 500 was to use a razor mm. i chose that decision because a lot of my followers were asking me if i were going to do that 
Mm. Well, I use, I use it. I try to use it, but it felt really uncomfortable, really rough on my head. So I just use it like in some parts. So it was growing not too, not even. Ooh. So I, that's another reason why I was wearing a beanie because it was kind of patchy. Um, mm-hmm. But I was so self-conscious and I'm sure nobody, nobody <laughs> care. Uh, I have to do the full uh, experience going without anything. And I will Ooh. let you know, I'm actually uh, recording every day because I want to post a video like my first week being involved. And, uh, and I want to see people's reaction. Mm. Uh, some of my friends, they had asked me if I'm sick and this, and I'm like, no, it's, I'm not sick. <laughs> so I understand in society, in society, a ball girl is not too common yet. Mm. So it's very interesting. <laughs> no, it, it absolutely is. And another thing that I... Uh, again, this idea of raising awareness that, of course, I was really interested in and kind of um, uh, motivated by, maybe inspired by, is being able to share your story in English, right? And so here with Maverick Lingo, I really try my best as the founder of Maverick Lingo. I try my best every day as much as I can to motivate students to improve your English, work on your English, make sure that Even if you take baby steps every day, make sure that your English gets better and better and better. Not so you can brag about your English, not so you can have a competition with someone and say, hey, my English is better than yours. No, but so Mm -hmm. you can share your story so that more and more people around the world can understand you, hear you, uh, participate in your story. And that's another thing that I thought was really interesting because... This could have been a story shared in Spanish only, right? Exactly. But because mm-hmm. you have actually reached uh, a certain level of English, you were able to confidently talk to your viewers, talk to your audience, and uh, uh, you know, express all these thoughts, all these emotions, all these feelings in English. And you could have easily kind of switched over to Spanish because you are... Uh, bilingual, I thought that was really, really awesome. Honestly, I thought that was really awesome. Yeah. Uh, You know, I think that, especially in today's society, you know, there is this platform we call social media and everything is out there, right? And I think sometimes people give us the best side of themselves, right? They show us the prettiest face, the prettiest hair, the prettiest clothes, And sometimes I think people kind of get lost in all of the perfections of everything, you know? And um, that's another thing I was thinking about, which, again, I thought was motivational. I thought was inspirational. Here is a beautiful young woman who is going to completely just get rid of that. And we don't know, actually, uh, what the results are going to be like. We don't know if she's going to be happy with the look. We don't know if she's going to feel comfortable with the look. And you did it live, no filters, no I was beautification. So to the <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, I bet, I bet. I, I mean, didn't, is, I didn't want uh, it to do it live. I didn't mm-hmm. want it to do it live. And that's another thing that my help, my donators mm-hmm. uh, won for mm-hmm. reaching a goal that it was mm-hmm. $200. I say, mm-hmm. if we reach $200, I will do it live. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want it to do a live because I thought that I was going, I didn't know how I was going to feel. And I thought that was going to be such a personal moment. Mm-hmm. Like you saw, I cry in, uh, when you post videos on YouTube, you have the chance to edit mm-hmm. what you don't want to show, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's fine. I really don't mind to show realness in social right. media because i think we need that we need mm-hmm. to be more humans mm. and less from ro- robotic or maybe less filtered so um, no i i i abs- absolutely agree with that i absolutely yeah. agree with that and i think that's also kind of a right step towards education where you know 
we educate each other to feel a bit more because you know when you say to educate or to get an education i think many times people think about going to school going to a university going to college which is a big part of getting an education absolutely but i'm also interested in just kind of everyday learning process things we yeah. can learn from each other as human beings uh you know there are times for me when i'm kind of just browsing through different videos on Instagram or YouTube where I find something that's kind of like oh wow that's interesting um <laughs> yesterday for example uh by the way guys i just you know welcome all our new viewers my name is Sam the mm -hmm. founder of Maverick Lingo with us today is Yset Mendoza i also want to give you just a fair warning guys when conversations get really interesting here on live Instagram remember that instagram has a limitation so i believe after 45 or 50 minutes it does cut you off automatically oh, whether wow. whether you're having an awesome conversation or not so i just want to give everybody a fair warning in case we get disconnected in case we disappear i will leave this video live for 24 hours on maverick lingo's um you know uh, live video here and so So uh, you know you'll be able to watch it again for those of you who missed fair warning in case we get cut off it happened last time we had a conversation and so suddenly we just kind of got cut off and so you know ah. fair warning <laughs> fair warning you guys fair warning uh, I've got to know uh, I didn't know that But uh yesterday for example I posted a very short clip I think it was like 30 seconds long of an interesting video that I came across on YouTube and it's a, a Harvard law professor talking about this aspect of time right and how in every single minute there are only 60 seconds right and we can either waste those 60 seconds or we can do something interesting and productive with those 60 seconds and i i really think for you to kind of take 2 years out of your life uh, mm -hmm. in order to raise money in order to uh but which by the way the money that was raised if i understood correctly was donated to the hospital yes to sign balbrix yes. yes 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 so the money that he said uh you know uh, collected or connect uh, you know the donations that she got uh, which were a little bit over $500 were donated to a particular um you know hospital for cancer research okay so you basically gave i would say about 2 years of your time and your life to kind of to kind of prepare yourself for this process yes yes um i mm. is, when i started the idea uh mm. i saw somebody on youtube that did the same with the same foundation and mm. i and i wanted to do the same as her um i started to um a fundraising on gofundme it didn't go well at all like mm. only two friends donated and that was all and i was like okay this is not working i posted a video on youtube talking about it talking about what i was going to do i got a lot of views but any messages any interest interesting about it So I that's what I was scared that this mm. time wouldn't work um mm. and I was like I have to do it now I can't wait what I'm going to wait I I just have to do it now and um I was a little scared because I'm going through um legal process where they already took my picture and everything mm. and I was like what if they and now have to do part of it again because i mm. changed my look drastically mm. and also because as you know i want to start doing castings and i was like mm -hmm. what if they don't like this look so mm. but i i i was like i have to stop thinking about that and just mm. do this mm. so but i already no but no absolutely and also but at yeah. the same time these are very uh rational questions ras rational things that you know you kind of think about and you worry about ahead of time um and what has so you know i'm sure people have asked you this question and i'm going to ask you this again so what's the plan are you going to let your hair grow 
grow out again? Are you going to shave it again? I mean, what's the, what's the plan moving forward? Yeah, I'm going to let it grow. Um, I'm very excited to go to all the different stages. Um, I want to let it grow because this, I did this to create awareness on Ooh. the foundation and Ooh. on the situation with kids. Uh, the cancer in kids is different than the cancer in adults. Ooh. So usually in kids is a little bit forgotten. Uh, people are not aware of that. So yes, I now that I, you know, like I reached my goal with them, I don't need to keep it short. Uh, if I don't want to, mm -hmm. um, like I say, it worries me a little bit if the if my hairstyle will limit it, the kind of job in entertainment business that I will get. Mm. So I would like to let it grow. Um, if one time I have to shave it again, I will shave it again. I don't have any problem with it. But at, the, at this time, I'm planning to let it grow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very, very, very nice. And uh, again, it's interesting that you, in the future, should you ever decide to shave it again, you've already had that experience. You are already yes. familiar with that experience. And I see that some people are asking, someone here says, uh, let's see, I'm guessing it feels super prickly now. Does your hair feel prickly? Meaning like when you touch it, it feels like you have a bunch of pricks on your on your on your on your head you know like kind of i don't know exactly how to explain that feeling you know but you kind of touch your hair like this and you have that prickly feeling does it feel prickly it, at the beginning not right now at the beginning it felt a lot of tickly tickling like ah, tingling okay, tingling okay tingling, tingling? My, okay. Husband learned, my, my husband teach me that word tingling okay like, okay i you know it's amazing how many um how many points of sensation sensation mm -hmm. do you have in your head mm -hmm. um but i don't i'm not sure about the word they mean so uh, maybe it, that's a good one here that that um saint baldrick's new york is uh, giving us the idea here it's now smooth it's not smooth anymore right so when your when your head feels very smooth it feels very comfortable nice smooth but then prickly is kind of like ooh it's not smooth anymore you can kind of feel the little <laughs> little 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 tiny pieces of hair that yeah. are there yes yeah it feels mm -hmm. like that definitely not um not skin skin like mm -hmm. not not mm -hmm. anymore as you can see it's already it's been growing so fast <laughs> mm -hmm. but um uh -huh. yeah yeah and someone else is also saying here uh, Chittam set in Riksat. It's saying, but you are rocking with your bald hair. So definitely you. You, people are liking the look. May I ask if there's a meaning to the name Yiset? It's a beautiful name. Mm -hmm. Wonderful question, guys. I love this question. Just a fair warning in case we get disconnected. Please remember it's because Instagram has this weird you know, limitation after 45 minutes or 50 minutes, they just automatically cut you off just saying, okay? So is there a meaning to your name, you said? Uh, unfortunately, there isn't. Um, I actually, mm -hmm. I just adopt a kitten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he is in my lab sleeping right now. If he was on the live, maybe you saw him. And I was looking for names, and I, on the look for it, I saw the termination Seth, and mm. it have an Arabic or Egypt meaning that I can't mm. remember right now. That's the closest I could give mm. you, but G Seth, no. And my mom gave me that name, like, I don't know why she mixed G with Seth. I'm sorry, they don't have them. It doesn't have a meaning. <laughs> is it is it a um, is it a uh, common name in Venezuela? Out of curiosity, no. No, I think it's not no. common anywhere. Um, it, I have seen yeah. a lot of girls with it, but not not like yeah. here, Jim. Because I have seen Lisbeth, I have seen yeah. Lisbeth, I have seen Giselle, right? But I yeah. have not seen. Yiset, Yiset. Yeah. Uh, and I remember when I read your full name, I kind of got stuck with the middle name Lorena because I think 
it felt yeah. so uh, common, you know, and I think it yeah. was easier for me to remember easier in the beginning and then, and then I just kind of yeah. went with it, right? There are so many comments here. Let's see, when is your next smooth shave? Wow, you plan. When do you plan your shave again? The look suits you. Please maintain it for some time. So people are, listen, you have some fans here for your hair. They're like, hey, Aww. keep this hair yeah. for a while. And then uh, yeah. Hey said, stop by the shop. I'll give you a trim and I'll have you avoid the awkward fuzzball phase. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jackie, okay. <laughs> Hi, so, Jackie. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But I think, are you in New York? I live in LA. <laughs> right. I have to that's stop a, by New York. That's a very good point. So maybe next mm -hmm. time you're, you're passing by New York, you have yeah. a spot. Uh, to stop by here, right? Okay. No, I mean, a very, very, um, honestly, I really, really, in, I feel inspired by what you did. Uh, you said, honestly, and again, not for the shock value, like, okay, long to short. No, but just, it's such a huge decision to make and you did it. And I think you did it for a really very lovely cause. And Yeah. A lot of respect, really, uh, for that. It's really beautiful to pronounce. By the way, you look so pretty with and without hair. Kudos for the courageous decision. Wow, what an, awesome, ex what an awesome expression we have in English here. Kudos. K-U-D-O-S. Kudos for the courageous decision, which means good job for the for the courageous decision you know i support your courageous decision first time uh, i hear that expression and then uh saint uh, baldrick's new york says no i just moved here in la actually he said oh, so okay <laughs> there you go <laughs> thank you i will i will there stop by. <laughs> you go. right uh stop by i'd love to help you out and get you in touch with some local St. Baldrick's people, and they'll love to get you involved since you are so passionate about uh, the project, Thank I'm you. assuming, right? Wonderful. And guys, you see, this is really also ultimately the goal of this uh, live I'm trying to do every Wednesday here. I like to call it Make Your Voice Heard. And so the reason why I like to call it Make Your Voice Heard is because today we heard Yiset's voice, okay? Yiset showed us, told us her story, a little part of her story, and hopefully those of you guys who watched today, who followed, felt a little bit of inspiration, felt a little bit of, uh, you know, encouragement. Maybe you're going through some type of challenges in your own life, and hopefully, you know, uh, seeing this story and uh, reminding yourself of other people's challenges that sometimes can be very serious, Uh, inspires you to keep going and not give up and all that good stuff. You know, I'm a big fan of those things, right? Uh, and uh, so uh, I feel, honestly, I feel very grateful that you joined us here today, uh, Isak, you. Thank for, you for this live. Invitation. You know, and it's our first one. Who is to say it's our last one? Of course not, right? We're going to do more of these live, uh, yeah. you know, but for me, it was really important. Uh, I want to have Yiset part of this live i want to share your story with other people and uh even if two three five people hear this story and spread it to others it's it's uh i think we are kind of reaching our goal here which is to spread uh, awareness to spread awareness do you feel that this experience has made you a little bit tougher a little bit stronger has it changed your perspective on life a little bit um somebody just asked me that uh, if how I feel if, if I feel that my life had changed. I told him that there's been just a couple of days since I did it. So right now I couldn't tell maybe in one year I could give him a better answer. But definitely all the processes I took the decision to now that I completed my task, um, I learned that it feels very good to learn how to um, let a part of you go to mm. help somebody else. Mm. Um, in this case, it's hair. In another case, for another person, could be an organ. Uh, mm. So it's, it's, it's amazing. And I wanted to say that I'm very happy um, some, 
some girls have messaged me saying they feel motivated, they want to do the same. And I want to say that it's not about having a, now that every girl have to go and shave their head, it's not about that. What I want you to feel is a strong about feeling strong about what you're going through. Hey guys, Teacher Sam here again. I apologize, we got disconnected. Suddenly I could not hear you said anymore. I'm not sure if you said is still with us here live. Uh, you said if you are live, feel free please to invite me again uh, just so we can kind of, uh, you know, end this conversation. Your point of to, to what you were saying. Let's see here, you said, are you there? Hey. Hey, I'm, I'm so Where's sorry. Here? Yeah, I think that we got disconnected. I could no longer hear your your voice. So you were saying that several women have contacted you and asked you about, uh, you know, they feel motivated to shave their head. And, and so uh -huh, continue sharing your... Yes. your um, all right. So I was saying that that's amazing. And when I get those messages, I feel very happy that, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. um, but what I want to clarify is that it's not about every girl shaving mm -hmm. their head. Is about feeling confident and strong no matter mm -hmm. what situation you're going through. Mm -hmm. And doing this because cancer patients, they have mm -hmm. to lo they lose their hair because chemo. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, if you're going through a hard time in, in another kind of uh, part of your body uh, life, just take it and be strong about it. And, mm. and, and something else I wanted to say is that sometimes I feel sometimes we live in a bubble where mm. we, we think our problems are <laughs> the biggest in the world. But mm. then when you open yourself mm. to see uh, the reality of other people, mm. and like I, like I saw the reality of people that suffer of hair loss, Ooh. or either cancer, alopecia, or any other illness, I felt like, okay, I feel in bad because I'm losing some hair. But they are losing their eyebrows and their mm. eyelashes. Mm. So you start learning to not get attached to either material things mm -hmm. or, um, or like your hair, you know, mm -hmm. things that your hair, your hair will grow. So yes. I, I, that's my message. I want, I want them. I did this because I want women that are go going through this feel strong and feel confident and mm -hmm. don't feel ugly or, or feel that people are going to judge them because they don't have hair. That's, mm -hmm. that's why I did this. Yes. And, and uh, that's another honestly very positive message, in my opinion, something that we really, really think I, I'm sorry, it's something that we really, really need. And, um, you know, you're talking about a very challenging situation. Somebody finding out, oh, they have cancer, they have to go through chemo, they probably will lose their hair, and so on and so forth. A very, very challenging um, uh, period of someone's life, right? But also just kind of, uh, in general, I think, Again, with this platform, social media platform, because everything is out there. I think a lot of people fear, feel a lot more vulnerable these days. You know, yeah. I think a lot of people feel, um, again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a doctor. It's just a personal observation. I think that a lot of people feel the pressure to look a certain way and be a certain way and all these things. And sometimes it becomes a little too much, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Sometimes it feels like, oh gosh, I can't keep up with this because there's all these kind of um, influences coming in and all these influxes coming in, right? And it's kind of like, oh my God, like what's going on here? Who am I as a person at the end of the day? So, you know, as an educator, as a language coach, I always welcome those types of um, you know, topics. I think it's important that we talk about these things. I think it's important that we remind ourselves 
um, be aware and be mindful of all the pressure out there and all the pressure many times that we put on ourselves as well. You know, oh, I should look like this or I should be like this or I should, uh, you know, la, 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 the list goes on and on and on. And I, I you know, I quickly went on Google and looked up this word here, um, bubble, right? I kind of want to share with, with students ESL students who are listening to this, what does it mean to be in a bubble? You know, we use this expression in English when we're talking about people who kind of live in their own little world, right? In their yeah. own little world. And sometimes when you live in your own little world, you are not aware of what's going on outside of yeah. the bubble. You know, you yeah. are so preoccupied with your own little world that the world outside of your world becomes very, very small. Does that make yes, sense? Mm -hmm. Exactly. When you mm -hmm. see through the bubble, the bubble, <laughs> you learn to be grateful for what you have. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling to uh, my, my followers in the account that um, to be grateful for little things as your smartphone. Mm -hmm. There are, I think, 80% of people in the world don't have uh, what we have right now. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to to do these kind of actions. Mm -hmm. I recommend do anything to help somebody. You don't have to shave your head. Just uh, spreading uh, the message, participating in uh, in a, with you know a foundation or a hospital or mm -hmm. any kind of help to help to realize that you are luckier than you think. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. And again, speaking of social media and speaking of that platform, sometimes this message, you know, be grateful and love yourself. And even that message sometimes can feel a little bit artificial. You know, sometimes it, it has that tone yeah. like, Ah, whatever type of thing, right? But, but <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I wholeheartedly agree with yeah. you. I think we really have to wake up every day and look at our lives and say, hmm, how is my health today? Everything okay? Okay, everything okay. How is my life today? Do I have enough of food? Do I have a place to stay? Uh, how am I doing with money? Am I okay? As long as you are okay, don't lose that sense of gratitude, right? Be grateful, show gratitude. But there's nothing wrong with trying to improve yourself. And I, I'm not trying to discourage that in any way. Please, yeah. keep going, try to improve mm -hmm. yourself. But I guess, I guess we both agree on the fact that just as long as it doesn't become like a pressure Something yeah. that you, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to mention something, um, Sam, that mm -hmm. obviously is not, you don't have to feel grateful or happy all the time because that's mm -hmm. not realistic. Mm -hmm. That's not realistic. I have my days where I feel depressed, where I feel mm -hmm. down, and that's normal. We are humans, mm -hmm. that's normal. You don't have to be always happy, always grateful. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the life. It's mm -hmm. just trying, trying to be, uh, to see the positive side. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you have to always be positive and happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I read something a couple of days ago saying that sadness is a healthy feeling. Mm -hmm. It help you, uh, it help you to let go that, that mm -hmm. what you have inside of you. So don't, mm -hmm. don't re repress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Again, I really agree. I really agree. I think you're hitting some very yeah. important key points here, which I strongly agree with. And um, I remember like about two years ago is, you know, thinking, okay, I want to start Maverick Lingo. Oh, what do I want Maverick Lingo to be? Oh, I want it to be a place where people learn English, improve their English, learn about languages, you know, uh, learn interesting facts about languages and so on and so forth. But as time has gone by, you know, I have noticed that here, especially here through Instagram Live, uh, we have built a nice little community of um, information sharing, educational information, 
you know, where we, we try to share information with each other as often as possible. And sometimes we agree, sometimes we disagree, but it doesn't matter, honestly. It really doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is, uh, you know, it's a place. It's a platform mm -hmm. where we can hopefully join and learn something new, you know, see something new, think about something new. Maybe today in our conversation, you might have said something, I might have said something that we've never thought about before, and maybe we will walk away from this conversation and be like, huh, that was kind of interesting. I've never thought about that before. And so it, it opens up something in our mind, which you never know where it can take you, it can yeah. take you to a new book, it can take you to a new topic, it can wake up this whole new perspective that you never really knew you were interested in and so on and so forth. And so far, all these live videos that we do here have been with students, uh, you know, who speak, their mother tongue is a different language. It's not English, okay? And that has been extra important to me to hear stories from students who did not grow up speaking English, who basically learned to speak English over time. And um, again, for me, that's really powerful that you were able to share your story, your experience, your challenges with us today in English. And I'm, I'm really grateful to you, uh, you said, honestly, I really, really am. And like I said, it's, your, it's our first invitation, but it's definitely not our last. I see us doing this again in a couple of weeks for a little <laughs> update of your hair, right? And you yes. know, whatever, whatever else is going on um, yeah. with you. So I really want to say thank you for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for, for inviting me to your Absolutely. nice community. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for being a part of it. Guys, we're going to wrap it up here. I apologize. I really don't want to end the conversation yet, but I have another online learning class in 10 minutes. So I have to prepare for that class before we start. You said... Besos, abrazos, muchísimas gracias. Ah. Thank you so much. No, la verdad, muchísimas gracias. And, you know, uh, we will talk again. We have some unfinished business that we're working on together. So we will talk about that as soon as yes. things lighten up a little bit. But uh, outside of that, thank you again, really, from my heart. Thank you for doing thank this. You. And, guys, I will leave this video live for the next 24 hours. So if you haven't seen it, if all of it if you want to see all of it please feel free check it out and uh, follow also Yset Mendoza if you want to uh, for interesting feedback interesting videos interesting uh, learning community okay guys big hug thank to all of you mm -hmm. thank you so much okay kisses bye-bye see you bye. soon bye